Hello and welcome. In this tutorial, we will explain how to create a drop-down list that allows the respondent to select multiple items from the list. On this sheet, you see the seven continents and different means of transportation. We ask respondents to select all continents they have ever traveled to and the transportation they used to get there. We start by showing how to insert a drop-down list and then add a feature of multiple selection using VBA codes. To insert a drop-down list, we select cell G2 and navigate to data and click on data validation in the data tools section. The data validation menu opens where we can insert our drop-down list. We set any value to list and select cells B3 until B9 as input to the source box. We do the same for the cell next to transportation. We go to data validation, select list and insert the range C3 till C9 in the source box. When we try to select two items in the list, you see that the second item overrides the first one. This is what we are going to change using VBA. Now we are ready to add a multiple selection feature. To do so, we first alter Excel's ribbon to include the developer tab. You navigate to File, Options and Customize Ribbon. Or you just move your arrow to the ribbon, right click and select Customize the Ribbon. On the right side, you can check the box next to the developer to make this tab appear in the ribbon. So we check the box and press OK. The developer tab is part of the ribbon. We click on it, navigate to Visual Basic, and the VBA editor opens. As you can see, we have already prepared the code. Each time we click on the drop-down list in Sheet 1, the code should automatically run. To do so, it is important to write your code in this sheet. In our case, that is Sheet 1. So we click on it in the upper left side panel. Next, we make sure that the worksheet is selected in the left drop-down menu and change in the right drop-down menu. This means every time you change something on the sheet, the macro gets activated. Remark that target represents the changed range, which can be more than one cell. In our case, when we select an item from the drop-down list, target will contain this value. Now we are ready to go through the code and explain what happens. First, we initialize all variables that we will use further on in the code. We have on the one hand old val that will keep track of the values that are already inserted in the drop-down list. On the other hand, we have new val that will monitor the item you would like to add to the output of the drop-down list. We go on to the second part of the code now, which checks for changes in the drop-down list. The first line here tells VBA to respond to events that occur, so if the worksheet changes, the code will be run. Next, we will only make the code run if there are changes in G2 or G3, which are the locations of the drop-down lists. Then we select all cells in the target range, having validation criteria. This avoids the code from stop executing when, for example, you type something in cell G2 instead of selecting an item from the drop-down list. So in case there are no cells with validation criteria, we stop the code from running since nothing has to appear then. Now we reach the third and final part of the code, which adds the multiple selected items to the list. So else we are going to verify if the target variable has a value. If nothing, we shouldn't do anything, so we stop the code there. Otherwise, we have to add the selected item to the list already shown in cell G2. To do that, we set application.enableEvents to false which allows us to perform some other actions on the worksheet before the code can be triggered again by another change on the worksheet. Then we store the selected item in our new val variable. We call undo to go a step back. Now the target variable is equal to the items that were already selected and visualized in cell G2. If old val was empty, so if there was nothing selected yet in the drop-down list, we set the target value equal to the new value in the other case, if there was already something selected, we add the new value to the old one, separated by a comma. You can easily change the comma to whatever you like by typing any separator between the codes. If you prefer the items to all appear on a new line, you can replace the codes and separator by VB new line. We have added the line INSTR old val new val equals zero. This checks if the new value is already part of the old value. If that is not the case, it is zero and we add the new value to the list. Finally, we set application.enableEvents to true to make sure the code runs again if the worksheet is changed. 
Now it's time to check if the code actually works. We go back to our Excel workbook and select a few items in the drop down lists. Let's say we've traveled to Europe and North America and we went by plane and train. As you can see, the code works. This concludes our Excel drop down list multiple selections tutorial. If you have any questions or comments, let me know. Be sure to subscribe if you want to watch more Excel or software related tutorials. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.